In Swiss Window Journeys Architectural Field Notes, Momoyo Kaijima wrote, Our lives have always been changing, but the speed of change has accelerated with industrialization, modernization, digitalization and globalization. The Industrial Revolution brought not just mass production, but also a massive supply of new materials and new forms of glass, steel and concrete. These materials remade buildings and cities and accompanied the change of societal structures that resulted from industrialization. Production technologies for window frames, their hinges and windows themselves, developed in tandem with new construction techniques that met the demand for larger buildings. The development of glass manufacturing with materials that admitted light while keeping out drafts greatly advanced the technical capacities of windows. Sheet glass was already being mass-produced relatively cheaply by the end of the 18th century, while the mid-20th century saw the introduction of flowed glass, which allowed for even larger and more curved glass surfaces. Windows were integral to creating large factories, office blocks and housing complexes. They also evolved to support life in the new environments created by infrastructure that supported urbanization and the movement of goods and people, and facilities catering to new concerns for health and tourism that began to proliferate around the same time. In our research at the Chair of Architectural Behaviorology at ETH Zurich, we examined changes in movement, temporality and context surrounding architectural forms to analyze them by considering climate, materials, living things and architectural typology. We take into account how changes of the day, seasons and other aspects of our daily lives influence relationships between architectural form, environment and behavior of people, animals, plants and materials. We are attracted to the living forms of architecture that are shared by many people over the time and used widely and repeatedly. When we consider windows from a viewpoint of behaviorology, we consider how their shape is related to the physical climate and movement of air, light and water, as well as the behavior and lifestyle of the people who use them. Window shapes also change according to the wisdom and ingenuity of the people who create them and in relation to technological developments described above. Over time, the shape and materiality of windows have changed in response to who uses them when, where, why, for what and how. Windows engender connections with the outside world and create a relationship between the interior and exterior of the building. They accommodate elements that are necessary for life in a particular place and function as tools for daily life by making certain activities possible. As windows put us in touch with the climate and the seasons, they work with the spatial characteristics of the architecture as a whole to calibrate the elements of the external environment and bring selected external elements inside. For example, in dry regions, whether cold or hot, small windows help maintain temperature and humidity. In monsoon regions, larger windows enhance natural ventilation and promote drying. The different positions of the openings also help respond to the local climate. Windows that are above the floor enhance ventilation in hot regions, while low walls below windows can block out or let in solar heat, depending on the angle of the sun. Tracing typological differences reveals a genealogy of windows that expresses how our daily lives are unfolding against the backdrop of social and technological change. In my home country, the word for window, mado, indicates a doorway between columns, imposed and beam wooden structures made to suit Japan's mild and humid climate. Families in traditional Swiss homes lived in a different climate, however, and used to spend the cold winter months gathered in living rooms with low ceilings and a stove that was used for both heating and cooking. 
The first Swiss windows, in contrast to those in Japan, appear to be holes carved into the walls of wood or masonry structures to let in air and light. They were made with local materials, and the size of those holes and the mechanisms for opening them reveal considerations behind their conception. We traveled to 70 sites in Switzerland to observe how windows differ from region to region, even within such a small country. The unique wealth of windows in Switzerland is rooted in the country's geographical location in the center of Europe but the variety of window types are adapted to the different climate zones, especially the high solar radiation and dry, cold temperatures that result from the complex topography of the Alps, which were formed by the collision of the Eurasian and African tectonic plates. The cultural influences of the neighboring countries of France, Germany, Italy and Austria also contributed to the variety of styles. Developments in industry and infrastructure, the spread of urbanization and mass tourism, and the challenges of climate change continue to create new forms of windows to this day. To explore what kinds of architecture and specifically what kinds of windows respond best to the landscapes of Switzerland and how we live our lives now and in the past, we selected 70 case studies of Swiss windows from different historical periods and regions. They are grouped into eight chapters based on activities that reflect our understanding of windows as tools for living. We recorded our journeys to these Swiss windows through field notes that include drawings, on-site measurements, photographs and documentary research. To find out about the origins of the windows we selected, we referred to both oral and written sources. We then discussed the characteristics of each window and decided on a theme and the appropriate means of drawing it as a plan, cross-section or perspectival view. When considering the characteristic of each window, we studied its relationship with the context and climate and looked at the mechanisms that exist between the window and other elements of the buildings, such as doors, floors or walls. By carrying out this kind of observation, we could see how the window is an integral element for agricultural, industrial and commercial activities. Windows have been a key element in the development of many types of industries and the buildings that facilitate them. A life bound to place and environment has given way to one ruled by economy, where for a price we are able to obtain goods from all around the world. But the destruction of the global environment is now forcing us to reevaluate the changes of the 20th century from the perspective of our daily lives. With the introduction of modern architecture, every room in a house could be heated by oil or gas. The traditional wisdom of Swiss architecture that accommodated seasonal variation was further marginalized in the 1990s, when the standards for insulation performance were created with the global environment in mind. Our planet must confront and overcome the climate crisis, but it seems that windows, a tool designed for mediating our environment, are becoming increasingly detached from our bodies and our actions. In the context of promoting environmental sustainability in the 21st century, there is an increasing focus on rationalizing the performance of windows. Many approaches are beginning to be institutionalized and evaluated from a broader perspective or in pursuit of global standardization. Despite our massive capacities for gathering data, however, these approaches are not yet advanced enough to analyze microclimates or to turn wisdom of daily life into tools for living. How then can we maintain our accumulated intelligence of the window in architecture? We hope that this journey through Swiss windows will lend insight and inspire further exploration.